pedals, adult musicians' favorite toys. And today we are going to build a pedal board, or we are planning to build a pedal board. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Gregor Fries. I'm the guy behind BassTheWorld.com, this channel here. And one and a half years ago, I made a video about my pedal board. I showed you all the little pedals on it, and which was my studio board, which has changed since then. So before we dive into the new board or boards in this case, uh, let me give you an update on this very board that I showed you. This is not my recording board anymore. This is now my band board because I've joined the band uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, we have uh, the Red Mug from Jam Pedals, which is kind of a Big Muff uh, copy or thing. Then we have the uh, Voodoo Based Zwei uh, 2 from Roger Mayer, which is an amazing an overdrive. It's it's in, in combination with a tube amp, this is just godly. Then we have the Dunlop uh, wire, just the standard wise, the white bass wire, which I love. Then we have the Jive, most important pedal on all of the boards, uh, which is just a real saturation. It's just a, it's a clean, I use it as a clean pedal just to give me more saturation. It sounds amazing. Then we have, of course, the Peterson tuner, and then we have from Endangered Audio Research, uh, the, what's it called? The AD4096 MK2, which is a delay. So that's my band board, but uh, this can now go. Because as I said in the other video, I kind of want a bigger board for the studio. I want to have more pedals, I want to have more fun. This was a very, the first studio board was very functional. So it mostly drives, a tuner, an octaver. I mean, these are the kind of standard things that we need mostly here for recording if you want to use any bass demos with effects or these sort of things. But again, I want to have more pedals. I want to have more fun with this board. So. Things like delay, reverb, envelope filter, something like a modulate, modulation pedal is kind of necessary. So what's happened? After I, <laughs> I uh, released this video, I got in contact with uh, Temple Audio, who make the, the guys who make these amazing boards. And they loved the video and they said, hey, want to do something together? And I said, yeah, I kind of want to because I need a bigger board. So they sent me a board, which is this one here. Super cool. I mean, first of all, they have these red sides, which are amazing. And uh, the more I thought about this entire project, I came to the conclusion a big recording board is kind of a two-sided thing. Um, on one hand, of course, you have more things you can do with it. But on the other hand, the more pedals you add to a recording chain or to any signal chain, the less sound good there is. I mean, I hope you know what I mean. I mean, if just if there are more pedals, there's more issues uh, with your signal, potential issues at least. So I thought, I love this, but I, I, I don't want to have a big board uh, in the signal chain all the time because when we're just recording bases and we just need a tuner, I don't want to go through like 10 pedals. So I guess we need to build two boards so that's why they actually sent me two boards and we also have a little one which is and this will be like the standard recording board that we use all the time only things go on here that are useful all the time and here this is more of the recording fun board when we need actual effects and so let's get started um today in this video i, I i'm not really going to start to build the boards because uh, this is more of a planning phase of the whole thing uh, figuring out the layout, figuring out what pedals go on these boards and uh, looking at all the things that I got from Temple Audio from other companies uh, that will go into these boards. So let's get started. But before we do this, I need to show you something else which just arrived yesterday, which is just absolutely amazing. This is my personal uh, base, the world base from Sandberg in the limited orange version, uh, also with orange pickup covers, which just looks absolutely amazing. I love this bass. This sounds fantastic. It plays fantastic. And some of those are actually still available and around. So if you want to grab one of those, uh, now's the time. So let's do this camera angle and start with the little board. Um, the very first thing which will go on here is, of course, a tuner, uh, because that's the most essential thing on any board. Uh, this is the uh, Stropo Stomp HD from Peterson. I talked about this in the last videos. These are by far the best, the most accurate tuners that you can buy. They are a little bit on the expensive side, but I think they're worth every cent. Next pedal, again, is the Jive. Um, again, uh, clean, real saturation. So these are, for me, the two most essential pedals. And uh, what I will do is, uh, there, there will be a patch bay on the side. We will go in here. We will go uh, from the tuner into the Jive, and then there will be the output. There will be more pedals on the board, but this will be optional pedals. So that's the 
recording chain that we will use in every single video uh, in the future once this board is ready. Third pedal on this board, uh, which again will be one of the optionals, uh, will be the Rheingold PP2. Uh, this is of course the pedal which started the whole thing, so thanks Rheingold for this. Um, this is a fantastic preamp, uh, but it's mostly an equalizer. It has a bass and a treble control, which, I mean, just watch the review that we did. This is an absolutely amazing pedal. Uh, sounds stunning. It's very simple, but it's, it's just, it's, it, it just, does what you need if you want to have a little bit of low end uh, boosted or just a little bit of clarity these two controls are just an absolute dream team and from here there's two options i'm not entirely sure what to do yet either we go this route and add something like this which is the origin effect space rig uh, the black panel version um, this is basically an analog pedal that simulates the sound of uh, Fender tube amps and it does this incredibly well. We have a DI out here. We have uh, all these controls. This, this is a drive pedal, but it's also, again, this analog emulation pedal. So this would be uh, like an absolutely amazing, just a quick recording board. So we have the tuner, we have something to thicken your bass up a little bit. We have a little bit of EQ if necessary. And then of course we have in this case more EQ and we have an emulation. But what I think I will actually do is not use the bass rig. I mean, I love this pedal, but I mostly, this is, lives on my desk actually all the time. This is my, my quick plug and play pedal if I just want to have an amp sound for recording something quickly. What I might actually do here is add uh, the Caveman BP one i think it's called it's the same size as this also looks almost exactly like the Rangold, uh, which is funny um these caveman preamps they, they make these 1073 uh, neve style preamps which are amazing we made a review of the big pedal uh, a few months ago but now they've released a smaller version and which is just basically the neve preamp without all the other options the big pedal has uh, which would go on here so that's kind of what i'm imagining right now so the big board of course big pedal boards come with a completely different set of challenges uh, when you have more than let's say four or five pedals you need to consider something like buffers to just keep your uh, guitar or bass sound intact so uh this pedal board will probably i'm not entirely sure yet so this is not as thought out as the other one because the other one is very simple it's just a straight two pedal and then two optional pedals um, this one here is a little bit more complex, uh, but here's the state of what I'm imagining to do with this. Uh, it all starts with uh, this one. This is uh, the 29 pedal. It's called the Yuna uh, from what they're called. Believable Audio, I think is called the company. Um, this is a buffer which has uh, basically an effects way for anything that is not supposed to be buffered. So this is really cool. So you can have your drives that you don't want to have buffered uh, in here and then just uh, just get them out of the chain entirely. So uh, at least that's how I understood it. I'm not entirely firm with this pedal yet, but that's the plan. So this would be the first pedal. After this, again, follows the red mug because it's just it's just the red mug. It's, it's incredibly good. It's my favorite drive. Uh, distortion, of course, uh, based on the uh, Big Muff, of course, by Electro Harmonix. After this, it just the same as in the other board uh, follows the Rattler, also from Jam Pedals, which is their version of the Red Pedal. Also kind of a high gain distortion. <clears throat> I love this. Uh, has a slightly different, I would say, mid shape, especially than the Red Mug and they, I, but I especially love how these two work together. So this is an absolute dream team. This is the, let's say, the, the basic drive section that we start here. Then I'm not, oh yeah, there's another drive. Uh, then we have the uh, Hampstead Subspace. Uh, we reviewed this pedal earlier this year, I think. This is honestly most one of the most amazing bass distortions I've ever tried. This is so freaking good. This is a modern drive, something from the realm of Dark Class and these sort of companies. But um, it's it's very different. It's very unique. It has so many drive stages. You can get more and more and more distortion, and it's I especially love this for like when you want to have a low, uh, like a heavily distorted low end that that's still very clear and very audible. This is just an amazing pedal. I absolutely love this. I'm a huge fan of this. This pedal will definitely end up on this board here, it's at some place probably here. Then we have um, the uh, Chromatron from Three Leaf Audio. This is probably 
the coolest, best uh, envelope filter out there. I mean, I, I, I know I've said this about many other envelope filters before, but this one is just, for recording especially, it's so freaking good. You switch it on, it sounds incredible immediately. And no matter where the controls are set, it just sounds cool. Of course, it might not be the sound you're looking for, but it's definitely a good sound. And then you move some of these controls around. I mean, this is just, uh, this is this is my my absolutely favorite uh, envelope filter when it comes to just versatility, good sound, and uh, just just a quick working pedal. I mean, I have Mutrons and these kind of things. I have electroharmonics uh, filters. They are all fun. They all sound amazing. But for actual work, when you don't want to deal with any vintage pedal, with any noise issues, with any issues at all, this is the pedal to go. Absolutely amazing. The Chromatron from Three Leaf Audio. This is followed by my uh, very beloved uh, Sub Blaster from Ampeg, which is my favorite Octaver on the world. Uh, just very simple, direct sound, Octaver sound. And that's it. It's just, it's fast. It sounds very organic. I just, I mean, if you can get, I said this before, if you can get one of those for 300 euros or less or dollars or less, just go for it. Believe me, it's the best. I'm not sure if this is the right space. It might have to move to the other side, but that's something again that we will consider later. The Imperial Mark II by Solid Gold of X, which is a fuzz, kinda also based on the Big Muff, but it's very different because it's a gated fuzz, so it's more for, I mean, heavier, more chaotic sounds, I would say. You can get some amazing synth-like things out of here. This is, this is just kind of a... The pedal, I, I wouldn't really use it for distortion. I rather use those for, uh, but this is just something like a, like a, I don't know, like a joker card. This is just something just for unique special sounds. This is an absolutely amazing pedal. Then we have uh, from Universal Audio, we have the, uh, what's it called? The Starlight Echo Station and we have the Golden Reverberator. Both digital pedals, uh, this is obviously uh, a delay and then we have a reverb. Um, I mean, if you've ever messed up with anything from Universal Audio with their plugins, with their interfaces, it's whatever they touch turns out the best or amongst the best. And these two pedals are just right up there. The, the, the sounds in here are absolutely amazing. I love their small footprint. Of course, I could have gone with uh, other companies as well. But uh, I think the footprint is amazing. They're, they're very flexible. They're just, I mean, it's a reverb, it's a delay. There's not so much to say. These are kind of, the, if you want to add some spice to your pedal sounds, these are really cool. Um, the final pedal, which is uh, going on here, is another jam pedal, and this is the Harmonious Monk, which is a uh, tremolo. This took a second. <laughs> um, I'm. I mean, if you've seen the review, you know what I think about it. I, I never had a relationship as a bass player with tremolos before because it's not really something that works for bass. But there have been some developments uh, with bass players who just don't notice and just use it and just make it work. And they come up with really cool stuff like with uh, what Tim Lefev does, for example. Just this is an... For me, this is just an, a beautiful modulation pedal. Obviously, we need some sort of modulation here on this pedal. It can't all be drive. But uh, even though I love phasers, which are my favorite modulation pedals, I just love this pedal even more than I love all the phasers that I have. So, and the footprint is of course perfect and there's a seal on it. I mean, it's the most beautiful pedal in my collection. That's it. There's one more pedal. Uh, I hope you have seen the review we did of this, the zombie pedal uh, from Beatronics. I would, oh, sorry. I would love to have this on the board. I'm not sure. I mean, this is this is kind. This is a synth pedal. This is a crazy pedal. It has ten thousands of different patterns that you can have. All kinds of synth filter sounds. This is this would be also one of those wildcard uh, Joker pedals. Possibly replace the Imperial Mark II. I don't know if it even goes on here. Maybe maybe it's it shouldn't shouldn't be here because it's too special. But yeah, that's the plan for the board that's the I, i'm not entirely sure about the signal chain yet but yeah that's the current state of the planning of course these are just the boards and the pedals and obviously there's a lot more stuff to go into a build project so let me show you all the things i got from temple audio that will also end up on these boards um i haven't really looked through the stuff so let's do this together uh, this is a lot of fun uh, this is yeah just zip ties which i bought um, which I will talk about in a minute why we might need these. So, what do we have? RGB LED. So this is uh, probably the coolest thing that will happen to this board. There will be 
lighting. There will be an LED chain under the board, which looks like this. Uh, let's see how this gets installed. But yeah, there will be light under the board, which is of course amazing. It's super cool. There's something else in here. Oh, a remote. Not bad. Then we have, what is that? A module. Ah, yeah. Why is it? Why is it there? Uh, this is a patch bay. It's the 4X mod. Um, this is just what goes on the side of these pedal boards and then you can have your in and outputs there and even have a loop so you can have an output after one of the pedals and then an input to the before the next one and just loop another board or other pedals in between. Really cool. This I also have this on my other board. Very useful. Then we have, um, this is actually super cool. So those are uh, Siox uh, power supplies which are made for and with Temple Audio in a collaboration and these fit in these slots on the sides of the boards as well, which is just absolutely amazing. That means just pop these in there and these are your power supply. You don't need to have uh, something like a stream or anything other uh, underneath the board and need to find a way to install it. These just go into these slots, which are already there. This is for five pedals. There should be another one. Um, yeah, let's see what else we got. Here's another one of the patch base uh, for the small board, I guess. Yeah, I need two of those. Then we have, oh, this is the, yeah, this is the uh, power supply. So here's one more of those power supplies. Let me just show you what it looks like when you unpack it. Again, the power supply, and then you, of course, get um, this, which you need to power those, uh, which which uh, sits also in one of the slots at the side. So this is nothing that uh, is outside of the pedal board. This is in the board as well. And then you, of course, have all the little connector cables that you will need. Um, I love this because I, I especially love these temple audio boards because everything is integrated. You don't have to have too much cables uh, lying around the, the thing. So that's super cool. Uh, both of these power supplies will go on the bo on the big board because we will, will need a lot of uh, output for that. For the smaller board, I'm planning to, I don't have it yet. I need to buy something. Uh, one of those battery uh, things because I want to have this board just available at any time. I don't want to plug it in anywhere. I just want to switch it on and then so the battery solution is perfect for that. And then of course we have uh, from Temple Audio all these plates and this is basically how Temple Audio works. You have, so let me show you real quick how this works. These are these Temple Audio plates that you install on the pedals. Um, here's one, this is the big plate. Um, there's, there's just a like, like an adhesive uh, thing. You put it on there, it's just some tape on there double-sided tape which sticks very well i don't necessarily like how to remove how it works to remove these from pedals later but it's just something if you want to use this system just commit to it and plan on keeping your pedals so this, that's the again that's that's the plate you have the screw you have this little notches here which go into these holes and then you just uh, fix with the screw the plate from the other side through one of those holes and yeah that's a, that's an easy way to move pedals around later so if you, if you want to change up the the order of the pedals stuff like this super easy with the system um the only complaint i have i mean i, I love this that's why I, I use these boards the only complaint that i have is uh i'm i love vintage pedals i use a lot of vintage pedals uh, every day not every day but frequently and I will never stick something like this on a vintage pedal. I, it's just not going to happen. Only exception, of course, my uh, MPEG Sub Blaster because this is a pedal that I want on my boards all the time, so it, it has to have those. But uh, I don't want to ruin vintage, especially expensive vintage pedals uh, with something like this. So uh, please uh, come up with a solution for like a non-committal solution for, for people who don't want to commit entirely to a, to a pedal on a board and just want to try it out maybe for a few days. Um, so that's what the, what the zip ties are for for me. It, of course, with these holes, it's easy just to fix a pedal in place with those. It's maybe not the prettiest solution, but it's a solution. So that's why I have those as well. And of course, these plates come in all kinds of different sizes. Here we have small ones for smaller pedals. Uh, usually, I love I, I prefer to use two of those plates on pedals, so they so they will never rock around. They will always uh, stand completely flat. But yeah, that's the system with those plates. And of course, there's one more thing that we need for the board, which are cables between the pedals. And uh, for that, I called my buddies from EBS in Sweden because they just make the best, oh, the best patch cables. 
Uh, those are cool. Those I, I wouldn't need those for this pedalboard project, but I love those. Those are just flathead. Uh, those are power cables for for pedalboard, so I will use these on other boards, which don't have this Cyox system because Cyox. Oh, sorry, Cyox has these uh, outputs uh, which just don't work with the standard cables. They have their own cables, which is not an issue because everything's wired internally. Again. We have patch cables, short ones, 10 centimeters. Uh, we have uh, more 10 centimeters. We have 58, so really long ones. We have 28 and we have 18. So we have four different sizes of patch cables. I just, sorry for making noises with the bags all the time. Let me just get one out. These are my favorite patch cables. They just have these super flat heads, which won't waste any space on pedal boards. They are very reliable, they are super flat, and I, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of an OCD person. I don't really want to see pedals on a... Uh, I don't want to really want to see cables on a board, and these cables just disappear. So that's another... also one of the beauties of these of the pedal board system with Temple Audio that you can... with all these little drilling holes, you can just make everything disappear. So yeah, that was a little bit of a different video, a little chaotic. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyways, if you're into pedals, if you're into pedal boards. Uh, of course, just follow the series. There will be, I don't know how many videos until this whole thing is built, until the whole thing is done. There might be some changes on the way. We will see. Uh, however, uh, thanks for watching. If you stuck around, uh, thank you very much. Please like this video. Please subscribe to our channel. I guess if you made it so far, you're already a subscriber. But if you're not, now's the time. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>